Hi everyone, Mrs. Ross again. Today I'm going to share a wonderful story called The Seashore Book. And this was written by Charlotte Zolotow. And these were actually paintings and they were painted by Wendell Miner. So beautiful pictures in this book. And then at the end, I will have an activity idea for you. So here we go. The Seashore Book by Charlotte Zolotow. What is the seashore like? A little boy asked his mother. He lived in the mountains and had never seen the sea. His mother smiled. Let's pretend, she said. It is early morning at the seashore, and it's hard to tell where the sea stops and the sky begins. So this is where the little boy lives, and you can see the mountains behind him, but he doesn't get to see a seashore. So his mom is going to describe it for him right now. They are the same smoky gray until the mist shifts from gray to dark white from dark white to pale purple, from pale purple to hazy blue, and then suddenly the sun breaks through. It warms the cool sand, it turns the sea green, and the beach is golden gray. You run down to the water's edge, one small dark spot against the brightness of the sand and sea. You bend over and pick up a stone washed smooth by the sea. You find tiny brown snail shells and oyster shells, crusty gray outside and smooth pearly pink inside. You pick up a clam shell half open and inside a live clam snaps the shell closed. In my hand, the little boy asks. In your hand, the mother says. Then you reach down again and pick up a wet white gull feather from the gulls flying overhead. We sit at the edge of the water and build a castle of wet sand until the waves wash up and suck it back to sea. The cold water makes your skin feel like peppermint and you are tired. You lie down in the hot noonday sun now, and it feels warm as a big soft cat covering you, taking away the chill of the waves. The swish swashing sound of them lulls you to sleep. I watch while you sleep, and you don't see two little gray sandpipers run past you. But when you wake up, you do see their claw prints like pencil lines in the sand. You rub your eyes and it seems there is nothing in the world except the sound of the wind and the rising and falling song of the waves. And there is a beautiful painting of the seashore. There's the gulls flying in the water, meeting the sky and the horizon, the soft wavy grasses. You stand and look at the ocean, far, far out, so far it seems a toy. A little white sailboat skims over the water and disappears. The tide is going out. I'm hungry, you say. I am too, so we wade over to a big rock covered with seaweed and moss. We sit there together and eat our sandwiches and drink lemonade from our thermos and watch the small brown sand crabs squabbling at our toes. An airplane flies low in the sky. Its shadow on the sand is like a gigantic bird and you leap off the rock and chase after it until it is gone. I watch you throw your head back and twirl yourself around and around until you are too dizzy to stand and you fall down on the sand. The wind is getting cooler. Long purple streaks of clouds are forming in the sky. We take each other's hands and walk down the beach toward home. The fishing pier we pass is white as a snowfall with hundreds of crying seagulls waiting for the fishing boats to come in when the sun sets because they eat fish. So when the fishing boats come in, they hope to get some dinner. 
The evening air is so still that the life's buoys ding, ding, dong sounds right next to us, close and clear and loud. We climb to the top of the dune, away from the ocean, but we stop and look down across the seagrass to the sea. The setting sun is a huge orange ball. You are so tired when we get home that you can hardly stay awake through your hot bath and your dinner. We barely have time to kiss goodnight before you fall asleep. Outside, the lighthouse is flashing, golden gleam on, golden gleam gone, but you don't see it. You are sleeping so deeply. You don't hear the tide rising. You don't see the small crescent moon outside your window. The ocean is bursting in waves along the shore, covering the rock where we sat and ate our lunch and carrying up seaweed and shells to the sand. Look at all those shells. The little boy leaned against his mother and smiled. I like the seashore a lot, he said, and now I can always close my eyes and be there the way I was just now with you. And that's the end. So just by describing the seashore to her little boy, he can imagine what it's like even though he has never been there. So if you'll remember when we were in school, we learned that describing words are called adjectives. And there were lots and lots of adjectives in this book. So what you can do is go back to the beginning of this video and you can pause it on a page and your parent can help you find some adjectives. And then what you could do is either one, write a list of adjectives that you see on that page or you can pick one to draw a picture of. So let's see if I can come through here and find one. So right here it says small brown sand crabs. So you could write that at the bottom of a piece of paper and then draw a picture of a small brown sand crab. The setting sun is a huge orange ball. So you could draw a picture of the sun and then write huge orange sun or you could just write those words at the bottom of the paper. So it's just an idea of something that you can do to help you remember that adjectives are describing words. I hope you liked the story. And then you can share with me what you did the next time I see you on a Zoom session. All right, I hope you like the story and I'll read another one tomorrow.